The HTC butterfly, which is also called droid DNA in some other countries, including the US, and subsequently the HTC One has a look and feel so popular that HTC decided to continue with much of that with other phones as well. The Desire 600 is fortunate enough to have inherited not only much of the looks from these two devices, but also many features and user interface as well. As we mentioned before, the HTC 600 borrows many elements, mostly the good ones, from the HTC butterfly and then the one. You get the same slightly curved bag that we call boat shaped, the same brilliant thin profile with round edges. The Desire 600 also carries one of the most celebrated features on the HTC One, the stereo speakers on the front, one on each end of the display. There is also the boom sound and beach audio that adds to the music. What does not match up to the level of the premium devices is the construction however. Uh, unlike the mentioned two premium phones, the Desire 600 is majorly plastic, one that does not look very premium, but the plastic part mostly restricted to the back and the front of the phone looks absolutely stunning with the end-to-end -end glass screen, the red colored speakers and then the brushed metal aluminum ring surrounding them. The color extends to the whole inner housing and the phone looks so funky without the white cover that at times you might feel like using it without putting the cover on, which is not recommended of course. Talking about the back flap, here is another difference. The back flap of the Desire 600 is removable. Even better, both the SIMs and microSD card can be removed without taking the battery off, which is a great, great plus point. The camera area also begs for attention. The front side has the 4.5 inch QHD LCD screen with the speakers one on top and another on the bottom of the screen. On top along with the speakers you will find the 1.6 MP front camera, the proximity sensor and the tiny LED notification light. At the bottom of the screen you would find the soft hot keys, the back and the home key along with the HTC logo. Below you will find the micro USB port along with the mouthpiece, the left side has the volume rocker and on top you will find the power button, 3.5mm jack and the hold to open the back flap. There is no secondary noise cancelling mic mind you. The back side has the 8MP autofocus camera with an LED flash. 960 by 540 pixel on a 4.5 inch display does not evoke much positive emotions but here display is fairly bright although not bleedingly sharp. The viewing angles are also above average. The Desire 600 has the latest Sense 5.0 on top of Android 4.1.2 and sports blink feed that we came to love so much on the HTC One. Blink feed is your leftmost a homepage that aggregates and streams latest feeds from your social media and news sources, your events um, and all you know other kind of stuff. It also shown time, weather and uh, you know, your appointments and other things. You have a customizable app dock at the bottom of the screen. As there are no menu button below, look for it whenever available on the top right corner. The main app drawer is vertically scrollable, you can arrange it in grids only and can sort it alphabetically or by most recent or custom. You can hide an app or change the grid size from the menu on the right. You can create folders to keep similar apps together usual. The app doc stays here too. Now let's check out some of the important apps. The keyboard is a bit narrowed down in portrait mode by the widescreen format but is fairly comfortable to type on. The landscape version is much wider and better obviously. You can enable slide typing and dictionary and predictive word as well. We would have loved a dedicated number row by the way. The gallery arranges media in different folders according to source, uh, inside which the photos and videos can be arranged according to albums, events or location. We especially like the movie slideshow it creates automatically with an album when you sort according to events.
music app arranges the media in the usual ways of artist, album, songs, folders, etc. You can add visualizations and album arts are automatically downloaded from within the playback screen which is cool and much needed. There is no dedicated video playback app though. The browser is absolutely desktop grade and a fun to use. Uh, it inherits much of the feature of the HTC One. You can create new um, tabs very quickly. One tab uh, from the right top corner. You can go to menu and settings and then you can customize the browser according to your own taste. The Desire 600 is powered by the new but entry level 1.2 gig 45 nanometer Cortex A5 CPU inside the Snapdragon 200 system on chip. Coupled with an equally entry level Adreno 203 GPU, the Desire 600 will make you experience a steady lag throughout the user interface. We strongly recommend keeping only the important widgets on your home pages, not stuff the home pages with widgets. Also keep only the home pages that you need and not multitasking heavily. Do not have many apps on the background. You have the task killer, so keep a killing task day that you think you would not use anymore. The animation are very good though and we didn't see any kind of frame loss or shattering there or, or kind of um, significant lag there during normal, uh, normal operation. The multimedia playback performance is mixed. The audio output is one of the biggest strength of the Desire 600 with features like beach audio and boom sound, a set of perfectly placed speaker. You get loud output with deep bass. Also a very nicely tuned treble. The headphones are great and sound even better. The phone coughs blood while trying to play 1080p videos. Uh, it skips frame big time. There you see, the audio has gone out of sync. See, they are way out of sync the voice and the video. Yeah. Oh, I the message. Oh, it could play 720p better than the full HD, but still, there is frame loss and there is um, sync problem with the video and audio, but not as much as was on the full HD. It's still watchable, so you can see. You guys, did you see that? I just was like, what? Hi! Yeah. Oh, I received a message. Not very significant. From the universe? From a messenger. Oh, yeah, of course. Our greatest masters are disappearing. I fear this is the work of Lord Shen, who has unleashed a new kind of threat on our world. This could be the end of Kung Fu. But I just so although there is very slight uh, frame loss, but then it after all plays uh, 720p pretty decently. There is no default video player, so I had to download MX player. This played the videos uh, the best. Uh, VLC player almost could not play the full HD videos. So the absence of a defo uh, default video player really does not help. The DR600 clicks very sharp photos under broad daylight or enough artificial light with um, darker blacks, very natural saturation and hue and good deep 
colors however under low light the phone really stretches and you would see a lot of noise not grains noise even when um, the light is fairly there but not directly falling on the subject the same case uh, reflects even on the video recording as well in the broad daylight the video recording is very good uh, with natural colors crisp but under low light if the light is not directly falling on the subject you start seeing a lot of noise the HTC Desire 600 is powered by an entry level 1.2 gig Cortex A5 CPU inside a Snapdragon 200 system on chip coupled with an entry level GPU that's the Adreno 203 and only 1 GB of RAM it did not evoke much positive enthusiasm about the 600 being a gaming device but let's not take it on a face value let's actually experience some games to see how this guy performs in real world now we'll start with some basic games like this temple run 2 which should run almost in all um, android devices because these games do not take much resources There you see, it's playing pretty smooth. The colors are fine, the textures are fine, there is no frame loss. But we did not expect any frame loss as well or any texture loss because the textures of this game are not that complex. Let's check out what happens when the chimpanzee comes in. I just believe it's just skipped a few frames here and there. As long as there are two characters on the screen. Now again you see suddenly it becomes smooth and even the running becomes smoother once the chimpanzee is gone. no problem at all okay so now we'll check another one fruit ninja again it's full of beautiful graphics 3d animation however does not take up that much resources it should be fun so you can see when I'm slashing three or four fruits there is a very slight minor frame loss I don't know if you can make out other than that for most part the gameplay is absolutely fine now it actually became smoother and it's not lagging or there is no frame loss even when I'm slashing a number of fruits oh there was slight frame loss yeah it's random maybe um, it's processing something or maybe it's loading each of the animations progressively at different times I don't know but the lag is random and now it's becoming less and less and I really have to try hard to feel the lag but yeah so we can safely say there is almost no frame loss this part is becoming little hotter yeah so you can feel this part getting hotter so it's a nice 3d racing game that takes up a bit of your GPU and also quite a lot of memory so let's see how it plays so there's slight frame loss slight frame loss I can see it Let's see, we'll touch. Slide, slide frame loss. 
because although the environment is fine fine actually it takes our water pretty fine I'm intentionally taking it to a more complex texture areas Check it out inside the cave where there should be a little more complex environment and textures than this open response to the touch is very good it's almost feather touch I'm bad at this game I'm sorry I'm really bad however that's okay they can play this game also pretty fine although slight frame loss initially uh, I can feel this getting even hotter now but it's bearable enough is enough now time for some really good fun let's start Nova 3 and see how the desire 600 takes it it's taking a long time to start actually So as you can see considerable startup time. The game takes a fair amount of time to start up to go to uh, to start of the gameplay however it's taking slightly longer. is fine no frame loss slight in uncomfortable but not much it's not very smooth but would do
not very smooth but not like you know all the way smooth I mean if I need to turn I cannot turn in one swipe I have to give two or three swipe for it to turn comfortably around see I see slight frame loss. The movement is not very fluidic. Hey, let's check out some benchmarking score of the Desire 600 now and we'll start with N22. So there we go my device is 10745 so we're gonna soft reset before starting the next test the next up is Geekbench 3 So there we have. So the new Geekbench 3 shows two scores now. The single uh, the single core score is 202 and then the multi core score is 552. We'll take both but it's up to you if your phone is a multi core phone then you might consider only this that's totally your choice. But we're gonna take both. Next up is Quadrant Advanced. There we go, 5043. Next up is Velomo, and we'll start with the HTML5 test. So there's the score, 1561. So 
There we are. Some metal score. There we go, 366. There is a comparison. There. Next is Nana Mark 2. There we are, a rather low score of 36.9 FPS out of 60 FPS. At last, let's check out the HTML5 score. So 430 plus 13 bonus points which makes it 443 the HTML5 score of HTC Desire 600's default browser. If you like this video hit the like button and if you would like to receive this awesome content regularly please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.